Hey, Daphna, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Uh, my first question, who are you and what do you do? I'm Daphna. Um, I'm 20 years old from Boulder, Colorado, and I make music. Great. Um, <laughs> this was not the year anyone was expecting, but that said, it seems you were able to have a pretty good music year. You released two albums, uh, a couple singles, got heard by literally over a million people, made some music videos, got some good press. Uh, was there anything you weren't able to do this year that you really want to, that you wanted to, and hopefully you can next year? Um, I mean, I think it goes like the same as any musician, which was just play shows. Um, yeah, play live shows. I do miss that a lot, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favorite venue you've played around Boulder, Denver, that you you want to be your first place when you go you go play? Um, I don't know. I I do really I did really enjoy playing the Fox Theater, so maybe playing there again, I would be very happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a cool one because there are some cool videos I saw from that show where you, you seem mm -hmm. to like the entertainment side of playing shows too, not just the music. Because you had, you brought out like pool noodles and you had your goggles for your song "Swimming" that kind of thing. Yeah, I do like making it like a a whole show, so it's a solid fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you do just about everything yourself. It seems you sing, you play several instruments, write lyrics, produce and arrange the music. Um, if you were to pick the music trait you're best at or most proud of, uh, what would it be? Um, probably playing piano just cause I've done it the longest out of everything. Cause mm -hmm. I've been playing since I was like four. So that's probably like what I'm most comfortable with. But, like also songwriting I've been doing for a while. So that is also like something, but like that also depends on each song. Cause sometimes I can write really garbage songs and it's kind of hard to measure if I'm good at writing songs or not. <laughs> what, what's your trash rate for songs? Cause I, the other day I, um, I found like an old piece of notebook paper that had, I, I think a lot of people do this where you write out a potential track listing for all these songs you're working on. It was maybe like 16 songs and only three of them ended up becoming anything. Oh. And I, that, that seems like a higher trash rate than normal for me. Not, not all those were like finished, but maybe there was like a <laughs> verse or something there. I mean, I don't know. It definitely depends because there are a lot of songs I've written that I haven't done anything with them yet, but like I still kind of like them. Like I have two songs that I wrote in high school that I'm just now like getting to recording them. So like, I don't know. I think like ones that I've absolutely hated, like there haven't been too many of those luckily, but there are definitely quite a few that I just haven't, haven't found the right time for them yet. Yeah. The ones yeah. I absolutely hate, they don't, they generally they don't get all the way written. I get a couple lines and just like, all right, I'm never playing these yeah. chords together again. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Do you also mix your own music and master it, or what? What? What jobs with the music do you pass on to other people, if anything? Um, I do also mix and master. I do pretty much everything. Like, I don't know. I kind of like knowing that what is going to happen and that I'm the one doing it and like knowing exactly what I want and making sure it's getting done. Um, like there are some things that I like maybe have some help with if it's like something that's like I'm new to, but usually I'd be doing most of it. Yeah. yeah. There's some really cool things you do with the mixing. Like on, um, yeah, on you and me, there's a really cool panning hi-hat that goes back and forth. I want to say there's a phaser or something on it too. And I'm just like, this is a really creative mixing. I've never heard anyone do that. Do you, are there other people in your life you trust? So you, you have a song and you're like, what do you think of this? Should I change anything? Or do you really not care yeah. what other people think? Um, so I have like two main people that I like send feedback to. One of them, his name's Devin. He, um, he was like the person I like first recorded like anything with. Like I didn't have a mic like my freshman year of college. So I used his. And so I recorded my first two singles um, with his mic. And he kind of like was super helpful. Like when I ever had any questions or anything, like he would point me to the, like the right resources or like answer anything. So him, I always send my songs over to him and like, so he'll listen before I release anything. And the other person is my brother. Um, he also makes music. So I always send this stuff his way and yeah, definitely value his opinion a lot. So they, they generally have notes or people who won't just say, yeah, it's great. Release it. They'll, they'll really tear into it and try to help it be the best it yeah can be. it's like super helpful feedback like if something's bad like 
they tell me, but like in a constructive way where I can, I can actually do something about it. So yeah. Are, are there yeah. consistent things that keep coming up, whether it's, I don't know. I feel like usually if they tell me something, then I kind of like look out for it then in the next song. And like, yeah. so it's always kind of something different because it's also, I mix or like record each song differently. So new stuff always comes up. Totally. Yeah. Uh, well, since you mentioned your brother, you, you've done a few collaborations with him um, and you've collaborated with a lot of people. Uh, and I want to touch on that a little bit because there's two types of collaborations that you've kind of done the work with, with your brother Guy or Kovacs or Shea District. Um, and there's also kind of collaborations within your live band. Uh, that's where I want to start because like, like we've talked about, you make the albums yourself and where you're able to kind of perfect every little detail in the studio recording, but live, I know you can't perfectly recreate everything. Um, yeah. So with the live band, are, are you basically, are you a control freak and you tell them exactly what to play or do you guys kind of collaborate on rearranging these songs with a live group? Um, so luckily, like my live band, they're all really good musicians. So with them, like I just kind of give them like the chords and I tell them like, this is kind of the vibe I'm going and they kind of make their own thing with it. And I like that. Like I'm totally cool with having like a different live sound and having them do like more of their own take. Um, so I'm definitely less like hands on in that because before, like when I first started the band, I had um, two, like a different bass player and a different guitar player. And for them, I had to like write sheet music so they would know exactly what to play. And I hated that. Yeah. So it's definitely a lot more fun if like they can just do whatever um, and make it sound good. So. Is that the case where if the if the live band's playing that you have the song 100% done or do you work with them like jam ideas that are half finished? Um, I did that one with by myself that song was kind of like one we all kind of like did together or like i wrote um my old bassist he wrote like the bass part and was like i have this idea and then so i wrote some lyrics over it and then we kind of like flushed it out and like made it an actual song um but i haven't done too much of that because i don't really see them too often anymore it's right these days any gigs yeah mm -hmm. yeah is that something was that a fun songwriting exercise for you is that something you want to experiment with with more I, I think I, so. yeah. yeah it was definitely definitely fun to like have other input and like stuff like that um yeah it's def just definitely a lot more of like a difficult thing to do like because you need everyone to be there and like figure it out so it's like a more rare opportunity to do that which is kind of cool yeah because you can't control when inspiration strikes and if you're <laughs> by yourself you're gonna write the song kind of and you don't want to let that opportunity go to waste you're not going to wait until you're on a room in a two-hour rehearsal for a window to try to be creative no, exactly. but if, if it strikes then that's a good thing mm -hmm. yeah um cool so the other type of collaboration is the one where you're kind of featured on uh, other people's songs and i was curious about those where were you just contributing a vocal performance those songs, mm -hmm. are you also coming up with the lyrics and vocal melodies and are able to kind of write and be a part of the song? Or or do these other writers, they write and you just perform what they have? Um, so usually it's like with like the more EDM songs, they send me just like an instrumental and I write like the vocal melody and lyrics over it. And then like I record it um, either at their like studio or I just send them my own recordings. So yeah, that's usually like, yeah, I do all the lyric vocal stuff and they do all the producing. Um, and with my brother though, it's usually like kind of a mix where like we both kind of write the lyrics and like, or like he has an idea for a vocal melody he wants to do. He's like also singing on that one too. So it's definitely a lot more of like a collaboration and like trading ideas. And like, sometimes I even go into like the mixing or like the production and like add things, so. That's definitely more of like we're both kind of doing each part. So. And is that all remote with him or are you guys in a room together doing that? Because he doesn't live in Boulder or does he? Uh, no, he lives in L.A. So I def it's usually he we see each other a lot, though, because either he comes to visit Boulder, like to see the family or I come visit L.A. So it's usually in the same room. Gotcha. That's nice. Yeah. Um, and, and when you are wor working on songs, whether your songs or someone else's, I, I find when I'm working on something that the finished idea usually isn't 
the idea that started in my head. There are happy accidents or the little just experiments that happen in the recording process. Is that the case for you or do you, um, or, or when you have a song idea, is the whole thing pretty clearly mapped out in your head before you start recording? Um, it definitely depends. Like I've had songs where it's like, I know exactly what I want it to sound like and I'm like able to execute that. Um, and it's like great. But then like there are other ones where I think I know what I wanted and then all of a sudden I'm like doing the producing and I'm like, oh, I actually like this a lot more. And like what the song ends up being is like completely different, but better. So Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, well, being a musician, you get to play with a lot of kind of different kinds of arts besides just music. Um, mm-hmm. Like mu- music videos, its own art coming up with album uh, designs or photo shoots and designing merch may making your own website or even just being funny on social media. Um, it, do you, do you like kind of do doing everything? Um, or would you rather just focus on music and pass maybe some of those other creative jobs off to other creative band members or things like that? Um, I mean, I don't know. I definitely do like doing most of it. Like it, it does come down to like, sometimes I don't have time to do everything. So I've been like, at least recently, like, Last year, I was able to, like, do everything no problem, but I've been just, like, having a lot of more ideas and just a lot more things going on recently that, like, I've been beginning to delegate a little bit more. So, like, my little sister, she's, like, a really good artist. So, like, if I have an idea, like, she drew, like, the the stickers and stuff. So, like, I knew what I wanted, and then I told her, and then she, like, actually put in the time and energy to do it. So, like, I like creatively, like, knowing what I want, but then, like, having other people execute it is also nice. So it depends. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Did, does your sister ask for money for that or just, just do it as, as a favor? Uh, I pay her just cause she's like a high school student, doesn't really have a job. So like I, I might as well give her a, <laughs> yeah. That's a good sister. Um, yeah. And with, with the, the your someday video that came out this year, you were credited with the concept, the set design and mm-hmm. the editing on it. Um, yeah, there is an art to music videos and I I appreciate the effort you guys put into it because I've seen so many bad music videos out there (laughs) and you put in some cool time to it. Do you have other visual ideas you're excited to explore? Yeah, so I'm actually working on like a three part music video thing. It's going to be like three different songs that all kind of connect. So like I've just like started kind of fleshing out the concept for that. But this one, um, we're doing more of like a, like we're all kind of directing it. I'm working with two other guys and we're just like, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I'm kind of excited for this one. Cause it's like, I'm thinking a lot more about the story of like the video instead of just like the song. So definitely like it'll, trying to push myself more with this one. So we'll is see. it the type of thing where what's happening on screen kind of relates to the lyrics or is it its own separate piece? Mm, it's like definitely a different story. It's like a combination. Like this, the songs could definitely mean what like the story is, just like not as like explicitly. So, yeah. <laughs> well, gotcha. Uh, in addition to work on all your solo music, you're also the music director for On the Rocks, your college's uh, female acapella group. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any? Are there any ways in which being a band leader is different for that group versus kind of the Daphna band? Ah. Uh... That group is honestly a lot easier to like direct because it's like well it's like a lot more girls but we're like all pretty like self-motivated and like self-run and like all kind of have an idea on like what we want and it's not like it's just like my songs that no one else knows that I have to be like oh like this is what I like I don't know and like like the whole band thing is more of just my project while this is like everyone like kind of joined there like to like be there for a reason so it's definitely like a lot more um a lot more people helping me out with it too so i don't know <laughs> so so what what are your responsibilities then if it's super collaborative are do you get kind of final say in what songs you're doing or or who's singing what part yeah so like i choose like the parts and everything and like what songs we're doing for each rehearsal and like we all kind of take a vote on what songs we end up wanting to do in like the concerts and everything but i'm like the one like leading like rehearsals and making sure that like we're like staying on track 
or like right now during quarantine i've been also like ed um editing videos of everyone like singing their own different part and like compiling that and then posting it on the instagram so that's been more of the quarantine thing though i wasn't really a thing before yeah i imagine that's weird it kind of it, it's such a live thing to be in the room and kind of work on parts and then to do that all mm -hmm. yeah definitely um, you've had a lot of streaming success uh, with your songs, kind of across all your platforms. I bet it's mm -hmm. got to be close to, if not over, a mil a million total streams. Um, I'm sure people are asking you for advice on how to get heard, friends or other people on Canvas. What do you tell them when people ask for tips or tricks? Um, I mean, like, I'm definitely like a big thing is both like kind of figuring out like your brand and like not being afraid to post things because at the end of the day like anything that's like gone like viral or like was like picked up picked up by an algorithm is just from like luck but like my dad always says this thing that like luck is just when hard work meets opportunity or something my, my um, dad says the exact same thing yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very dad quote but, but <laughs> it's, it's stuck with me just the same as it has with you no, exactly. So like every anytime I'm just like, okay, I just have to like keep posting and like keep doing stuff and then like eventually like maybe like something will catch on and like doing it. So like even my brother like the other day, he was like, How do you feel comfortable posting like your TikToks and like not like caring what people think about it? Because I post the dumbest shit on there, but like um it's just like letting go of like the whole like filter and like being scared of what other people think and then posting and like maybe it'll work out. Yeah. It also, it, cause I'm probably a pretty shy person normally just in my life, but I feel like if I'm on stage or in performing mode, I'll just do the stupidest dances or like if I'm playing guitar, like do some weird kick mm -hmm. on stage and I'm like not embarrassed at all by it. I think that's the performer thing where it's kind of, if you're in the performance zone, you're not afraid to look stupid. Yeah, no, exactly. So yeah, I guess translating that feeling that you have on stage also onto like, social media and like maybe just like detaching your whole like music persona from like yourself might also work for some people but I don't know. yeah so so if that's the advice you give to other people how have you kind of done that for yourself really make sure you have a core brand um i don't know it all kind of has come like pretty naturally like just when i have like an idea of like what i want for like a website or like the same like color schemes i want to use like a lot of it is just like oh these are my favorite colors so like i want that to be like what people see when they first see like me so like with my website it was just like oh like i like a lot of colors so that's what my website's gonna be or like with social media like I don't know i like posting like dumb shit so i'm gonna be posting stupid stuff and like that's what people are gonna see so i don't know or just like having like a set concept for like each project and like figuring that out before you start releasing stuff is like really helpful um because like before what i would just do is i would post a song and then i'd be like oh now i'll do the marketing before like really thinking about it but it's like definitely a lot better to think about it before uh, it's not fun to do that. I It's the same thing I struggle with because you may, from the point of when you have a song idea to the time it takes to record it and then get the mix finished and maybe design album art stuff for it, it's been months. You've sometimes been sitting on these things and you just want to get it out there because you're excited for it. Yeah. And so to then have to sit on that idea for maybe six weeks as you come up with the marketing plan for it, I just want it out there. <laughs> no, definitely. It's hard. Um... But like sometimes it works out like if you have the marketing idea while you're writing the song you're like i know how i want to release this and then cuts the time in half but yeah, yeah. and what kind of mar marketing have you done before uh like I instagram ads or facebook do you find those effective or you can also do spotify ads. there's so many different ways to choose or you can chase trying to get on spotify playlists you can chase trying to get blog coverage there's all these different angles I mean, yeah, I've done, like, all of those. I think the most, like, successful with most results has been, like, posting videos on TikTok just because their algorithm just really caters well to, like, small artists. Like, it makes it, like, pretty easy to, like, to, like direct people from there to your music. Um, 
So that's like been like the main success, but I have like done like Instagram ads and like made like videos and stuff. I think like the main thing has just been like video advertising stuff. Cause I realized like a lot of social media and everything is visual. And like that's what people like is like mm-hmm. being able to see stuff. So like if I can promote my music through a visual way, then people are probably more likely to like click on it and be interested. So Right. Well, what are the TikToks you're doing? So it's like you're dancing to your own song as it plays? Well, honestly, I still haven't really figured out, like, why my TikTok thing is working. Because I've only had, like, three videos, like, really, like, be successful. Um, And all of them were just me, like, horrible angle of my face, just, like, half up of my forehead. And then, like, text above it saying something stupid about my song. Like... Like, I just had the Hanukkah one, and I just said something like, hey, like, I met this guy on the internet, um, and, like, we made this song, like, for Hanukkah. I'm like, please blow it up so my mom doesn't get mad at me for hanging out with strangers on the internet. So (laughs) um, that was that, and, like, that got, like, 200,000 likes. And I was like, why this one? Like, out of all the videos that, like, I actually put effort for, but who knows? (laughs) Yeah, and that's not the type of tiktok where you're planning it for weeks like all right on this date i'm gonna post it and here's the ideal time just you just do it and it takes off yeah exactly so like it's very random and i don't i still don't really know how it works but it, it right. seems so yeah. no I, I wouldn't expect anyone to know how it works exactly but uh <laughs> yeah but they've had some luck with it it's really cool mm-hmm. uh yeah in addition to this kind of work you're putting yourself into the marketing side of it you also have uh a management group what what is bad cap management do for you so i was just working with them for the i love you project and so like just because like i hadn't really ever worked with like a management company before so i kind of wanted to try it out and like see how it was with them um but like i probably won't be working with them again after just because they're they're based in philadelphia so it was like kind of like hard because they like a lot of the stuff i'm looking for is more stuff like locally that like they'd be able to help out with so like they weren't able to have like as many connections so i'll be working with a different manager who was like from colorado and he like knows more of like the local like venues and stuff so but they helped a lot with like um just like marketing and like playlist pushing and um a big thing that i they didn't really do but i want to focus on more with like this manager is like sync licensing 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 which i haven't really done oh right so we'll see how that goes we yeah we've got lucky on a couple random things and is sadly based on who we knew where we had one of our songs to use uh for sure the microphone company they used one of our songs in their product demo which was great they sent us like a few grand worth of like equipment like not these headphones but this mic we got uh-huh. some other like drum recording equipment and these nice headphones just because they used our song. And I oh, had one wow. of my songs used in a glassy baby commercial. Mm-hmm. They make like candles and <laughs> shit like that. And it was just because I knew the girl who was editing the video and that was like uh-huh. a, a nice little payday for that. But I, when, when I've pursued it with people I don't know, I feel like it, you're just sending out cold calling emails and I haven't had as much success with that by as much. I mean, zero. <laughs> Every it's always based on who we know if we get something cool that happens yeah no i definitely yeah haven't had any success with that either yet so we'll see yeah uh, yeah. yeah it's a good thing to shoot for mm-hmm. um yeah because this some since this summer you've doubled it seems like you've doubled your instagram followers and you had a massive spike in youtube subs was that any part of their management or is that kind of your own thing what you decided to push or just tiktok algorithms and everything after that follows yeah i think it was mostly tiktok was like the main source of that um and like yeah that was another helpful thing with the management company is they like kind of like pushed me to like make more marketing ideas like i had like this whole like scavenger hunt thing for the album that i wouldn't have thought of doing like at all like if it wasn't for them and like they were like yeah you should like post more tiktoks so i did like actually like focus more on that because of them so they were definitely like helpful with like directing me like to the right like marketing strategies. But like at the end of the day, yeah, it's like whatever the algorithm does that was kind of like what ended up happening. Yeah. I, I don't personally have a TikTok. Is that limited to a minute that you can do videos on there? How does that work? Yeah, it's like fifteen yeah, a minute, I think. 
Got it. Yeah. Did the, uh, what was the, the hallelujah and buddy Holly thing? Was that on TikTok? I saw that on your Twitter. Yeah. Did that would did that also go on TikTok? Yeah, I put that on TikTok, but that one I think only got like 10 likes. So it definitely depends on what I post. <laughs> I showed it to a few people just cause I thought like these actually work together really well. I thought that was really cool. That's a shame. That one didn't blow up. <laughs> um, yeah, so you mentioned at, at the very top of this, you're you're in college. Uh, you're not getting a music degree, though. You're getting an engineering degree. Um, so I begs the question, a- after you graduate, what are you pursuing first and foremost, music or some normal boring engineering job? Because I'm going to say you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> I mean, it definitely depends where I am like, in my music career. Like, if it does somehow give me like a study income then i'll go all in but um most likely i'll still be doing both where like i have like a job that gets me like actual money but then like i'm still like focusing on my music career like outside of work which like i think would honestly be easier to manage than my current situation because like work doesn't have homework but school does so yeah totally i was so stressed after college i was gonna have to get some normal boring job and um yeah but again i i find school like college is the hardest i've worked at things afterwards yeah you just get to leave work at work and and i don't have a a, a day job like that but um yeah but it's nice to not have homework like that um yeah so do you, do you want to tour or things like that what 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 are the big the big picture goals that you're like i haven't done this i want to try it I mean, I don't know. It's definitely difficult because, like, I I have like interned like at software companies and really enjoyed the work I was doing. So, like, if I were to like get like a software engineering job, I wouldn't hate it. Like, it definitely still be interesting. But like, I think like my future needs like some kind of combination of both like technology and more music stuff, just because I like both a lot. So yeah, there's definitely ways to do both. Like, m- most of my friends are musicians. They're most of them aren't able to do it full time yet. So they mm-hmm. have their day job and then they go play shows. And if they build up vacation time, they'll go do a two week tour, come back, that kind of thing. So it's, it's definitely doable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So this is going to be a long question uh, <laughs> to get to something short, but like when I listen to music, I find that the lyrics itself kind of become background to me. I'm paying more attention to, kind of the melodies or motions or just even the sounds of the words more than the meaning of the words itself. But I love your lyrics. Um, I find I actually want to listen to them. The bridge and submerge in particular is like one of my favorite stanzas in anything ever, basically. Um, and I read an interview with you where you were saying that you really like to read along to lyrics when you're listening to music, that when, when an artist tells a story that, that that's like that hits the sweet spot for you. Um, so with your music, do you think the lyrics can exist kind of as their own separate thing or can, can it be an independent story or does it need to be paired with the music? Um, I mean, I don't know. I think it probably could be like its own story, especially since I usually write lyrics like first, but I don't know if like I would ever like just read lyrics as like a poem or anything. Like I feel like the music just like complements it. And like and just enhances it like in a way that like makes it a lot better so like i don't know if like i think my lyrics alone wouldn't be like oh my god that's like the best thing i've ever read i feel like you kind of need the music with it to like be like oh this is like the feeling she had behind it is know. there a song you're most proud of what the lyrics for um i don't know maybe like we yeah, have either submerge or the devil's dance honestly like I really like the lyrics are really on that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then when you're writing, are all of them kind of first person your feelings or do you ever write stories that you feel like this, I like these words, but it's not really my thing. I feel like there's a story of somebody else. Um, honestly, like, I don't know. Most of my songs might be rooted in like like some feeling I had or something that happened to me, but usually it's like about a completely like other situation that I've never actually like, gone through. Because my life is pretty boring, so like I feel like I've had to like kind of like 
think of like new creative stories and like things I can like write about that like aren't just like stuff that has happened to me. So it's definitely like there are some songs that are super personal and like all like me, but like other ones that it just like yeah, like the devil's dance is not about anything I've ever like gone through. It's more just about like something I read in a book. So it like, definitely depends. Yeah, that's cool being able to draw kind of lyric inspiration from everywhere like that. Um yeah, I get another question on lyrics. You you did something really cool that I had never really seen done before and that you took an old existing song and added new lyrics to that with Nature Boy. Um, oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's like you there's a 70 year old song that's been covered by I don't know mm-hmm. thousands of people. And you had this brilliant idea that like, oh, this this isn't fully finished yet. I'm going to add a verse at the end and really finish the story or even like you kind of invert it where it, I think it starts kind of happy people finding love and then you just completely shit on that and say like no they don't end up together at the end what what made what made you want to do that take this song and add new lyrics to it I don't know I think when I like would listen to that song like the melody always like sounded it's like minor song it like, sounds pretty sad and I was like I just like felt like that the way it ended like wasn't the way I imagined it so I was like I'm just gonna have like my own version of it and like how it actually ends and I wanted it to be like a little bit more ominous and dark especially like I think I did that in high school so I was definitely a lot more in my emo phase and my feelings so I was like no this is how it should be <laughs> yeah and, yeah but you yeah. still played it live, or at least when I when we played a show together last year you played it live then so it's still <laughs> yeah. yeah even though it's from the emo high school phase you're still <laughs> repping it yeah no, st- still like it luckily but, um... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you, you said that you've been writing songs for a long time. When, when did you start and when, like, what's the oldest song that you're still attached to that you like? Cause I'm sure maybe the first five or so were garbage songs. When was the first one that you're like, I, I like this one How? Or, or, or you don't look back and cringe at it. Cause I did a CD in high school and <laughs> I don't think any of those songs I like the second CD I did, maybe there's one song I can it it takes a while for me to actually still stand by anything I did. Yeah, no, I guess like songs that I would maybe still release now was probably like junior year of high school or senior year. Like probably when I've like actually had a little bit more life experience than like you know, when I was like eleven years old when I first writing so- started writing songs. Um, yeah, maybe senior year of high school was like songs that I would like still actually like like the lyrics and think that it's actually something that might be worth losing but like before that it was a lot of just experimenting and like learning how to write songs so yeah and yeah. you mentioned there's at least two songs from high school that you're finally now reworking so mm-hmm. i'll be curious if i can tell which ones those are or not <laughs> yeah hopefully. yeah hopefully not honestly otherwise it's like uh who's this high schooler trying to release music um <laughs> No, there's, um, what's that? I think Jackson Brown, what was the song he did? He, it was some, I forget what the name of the song is that Nico from the Velvet Underground, he wrote a song that she did on like in the sixties and he was 16 and it became a huge hit. And, and so songs when he wrote like 17, 18 also became massive. And I, yeah, there are definitely some very talented young people. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew Lloyd Webber, the musical guy, I, I think mm-hmm. like Joseph and the Technicolor Dream Co., which is still performed in theaters everywhere, he did when he was in high school. Oh, and, what? That's wild. Yeah, and Jesus Christ Superstar, he was maybe 20, mm-hmm. which I, I had no idea. So that was, was crazy. Dang, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't have that. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of have some quick some somewhat rapid fire things uh just what's the talking sample at the end of you and me i listen to that i can't tell exactly what's happening there but it sounds cool um so that's a voicemail that i got from this guy freshman year of college um he was just like he's kind of who a lot of the album is about so i was like and he like I don't know. I I was just like, might as well like end end the album like with who it's about. So like I kind of like threw that in there, and I was like super nervous to do it, but 
he never said anything about it, so. <laughs> but but you think he's heard it? I think so, cause like I he's like texted me about the album and stuff, just like saying <laughs> that he liked it, but he just didn't say anything about that. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> how, how how'd that make you feel? Did you want him to acknowledge it? I don't know. It was definitely like. Because he has in the past like heard songs I've written. He was like, is that about me? And I was like, yeah. And like, it's just like kind of awkward, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. So I, I was kind of indifferent. Like if he acknowledges it, it's fine. Like it doesn't, like it's, I'm not really trying to hide the fact that it's about him. So like, it's not really the end of the world. Yeah. It works really well. Cause I think the last thing he says is okay. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect way to end an album. Um, it, was, it was funny. Like, as like, it was exactly where I dragged the voice recording to that it just like happened to end like that. And I was like, oh, great. I don't even have to do like any editing for this. Just to leave it how it is. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to. All right, this word I needed to cut out. And that, could, yeah, oh, that's mm-hmm. perfect. There are so many weird serendipitous things with music like that where if I try to add some weird sample, I'm like, oh, I can't believe how well this works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Was your Minecraft screen name really Puffle Pops? Yeah, so that or that was my first username that like I ever came up with was when I was six years old making a Club Penguin account, and my sister is like, "What's a good username?" And I was like, "Puffle Pops." And like I swear, like I I remember that day because I was like, "I'm a genius for thinking of that," and that no one else has had that username yet. I don't know why I liked it so much. But, um... it, it's a good alliteration. I was yeah, I gonna ask <laughs> why that name. It seems like there's no good reason. No, I was six years old and loved it, and then used that for everything until like sixth grade when people like started judging you for things. Right. Yeah, you didn't have to do Puffle Pops four or anything. You you got the OG. (laughs) No, just Puffle Pop. Uh, Do you want to be on any kind of label, or would you rather stay independent? Um. I don't know. It definitely depends. Like I've like spoken with like smaller labels and stuff and like considered like joining them, but like a a lot of what it came down to like me not joining was because like, I felt that what they could provide was a lot of what I could already do on my own. So I was like, why give someone like 50% of the cut when I can do just like by myself. Um, That sounds like a very smart decision. Yeah. So if it was like a, like major label that like they have all these connections and can really take me like the next step and aren't like completely fucking me over for like the rest of my life then like maybe (laughs) do do you have a dream label where you like all the artists on that label or anything Um, like that i don't know like maybe interscope records like they're pretty cool um they have a lot of like artists that seem to be able like billy eilish is on there and she seems to be able to do whatever she wants so that's yeah. pretty um so yeah like maybe then other than that like i don't know i haven't really like been focusing too much on that aspect but i feel like that's more of something that'll just like come if i'm like make myself more successful so, yeah it's the focus on what's in your control and chasing down a label is one of the things that's so you, you can spend your time doing better things exactly yeah Yeah. and and labels they don't just they're not going to take a chance on people these days you have to already have a fan base and have proven yourself so i think you're doing the right thing doing that yeah i feel like especially since there are just so many like artists now that like have like a like pretty decent following it's like really i don't know like difficult to like stand out to those labels so like you kind of like have to bring yourself to like even like next step above that to like even like have them take a second glance at you yeah it's been interesting i so that there's a really cool radio station in seattle called kxp um where i in normal times they have a touring artist will come through and play live sessions on the radio and i spent a lot of time volunteering there and helping those artists come in and i've been so i've like got to meet a lot of label people come in and like help the artists with their live sessions and i'm amazed how many artists they still maybe some of the big the big big acts they'll have tour managers but a lot of artists you think are really successful they're still doing everything themselves um because they yeah they have the skills and management to do that so if you can keep proving yourself that way uh Mm -hmm. yeah it pays off because once you get a label they're not going to do everything for you you'll still be responsible (laughs) for yeah some of the not fun parts of making music still yeah yeah um, a lot of the 
sounds you use seem to be kind of based off MIDI patches and other VSTs. Are there sounds, instruments, genres that you like that maybe you have in your sound bank that like, I haven't used this preset yet. It's really weird and I want to try it. Are there, yeah, I think things you want to change or just try going forward you haven't done? Um, I don't know. For this like next, but next EP, I have been focusing a lot more on like the sounds I'm using in like the actual production. So like usually that was always kind of like secondary to the song, but like I'm trying to like improve a lot more on like everything I've been doing. So like I'm using a lot more like newer instruments that I like actually went and like, messed with like the sound waves and everything so they can make it sound more of like what I had in mind. So it's it's a lot more like sounds that started from the VSCs, but then I like kind of like messed them up a little bit. And I don't know, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Still kind of synthy based things or, mm -hmm. or are you re replicating any real instruments on any of those? Um a lot of it is mostly mostly synthy th things. Another like I've been doing a lot more like like sampling of like like recording stuff on my phone and like actually like using stuff I like find nearby just to like make sounds that like I can't find because just like honestly like I hate having to look through like all the sounds and like no this isn't it this isn't it so if I can like already like try and make it myself that's a lot nicer yeah I walked through a playground and sampled some kids playing and was able to use that somewhere where it's like no one could tell that's what it was. But it, if you take it away, the song sounds empty without it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Are, are there your favorite things you've picked up like that? I don't know, if like bus uh, announcements or weird things. Um, or honestly, just on like this Hanukkah song that I released about like over the summer when I was cooking, I just really liked the sounds of like the onions, like just Ooh, like when nice. they kind of whistle and like the oil and they like they make like that high pitched like noise. So I like just like recorded that and put that in the song for like the one line that's like about onions on the stove. So. Oh yeah, oh that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, that was like a fun one that I like doing. Yeah, and when you put it in your session, do you label the track onions? I can't remember. I can't remember. I'm honestly super lazy with like labeling and projects. So like looking at past projects, I'm like, I have no idea like what this is until I listen to it because I just like throw it in there and it's super unorganized. So that's also probably something I should work on. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm the only one working on it. So it's like, I don't really have to make it readable for other people. Oh, that happens all some of our mm -hmm. songs I can mix myself, but anytime we have like a real drum set, I can't mix live drums for shit. So I like, if I want to make it sound good, I have to send it to someone else. And that's what mm -hmm. takes the most time is I need to rename all the file tracks to where it makes sense to someone else. Mm -hmm. And then, cause it's a pain in the ass to do that. <laughs> uh, do you keep an eye on your, <clears throat> your Spotify analytics? I'm curious because you've had all these, kind of mm -hmm. algorithms pick things up is boulder denver still the biggest hub of where people are listening or is there some other random place that has the most listeners um it's not boulder anymore. i can't remember off the top of my head where it is though i think it's, it might be los angeles let me check uh yeah it's los angeles and it's nice. just like yeah like boulder's not even the top five anymore so it's interesting well what, what are the top five or top uh, time, whatever, so like, whatever's yeah. interesting, whenever it stops becoming fun to read. <laughs> <laughs> um, LA, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, and Atlanta. Oh, it's a lot more of the South than I was expecting. Yeah, start adding a Southern accent. Your songs. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just start going like a little bit more country and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, some when I was trying to look up other articles or things that have been written about you, I was... I Googled Daphna and sometimes there's another singer named Daphna who shows up. Have you had any issues with this girl who she seems to sing exclusively Hebrew? <laughs> um, yeah. Are you going to drop some Hebrew bops to run her out of the business or anything like that? Um, I thought that was so funny because me and my brother were talking about it yesterday. It's like, I haven't listened to her. <laughs> are her songs good? Um, like some of them are, there, it's just not really my type of music. I think she has a good voice. And she's very talented. But like one of her, she has, it was funny. She has two different artist accounts on Spotify that are both called Daphna. 
and one of them is just like Hebrew like children songs and the other one is like English like kind of folk songs so it was like funny but I was like what if I just like start listening to like all three of those accounts and then like all of my top Spotify artists are just off those <laughs> um you know it could be pretty funny but yeah I, 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 I was just, wait what are you saying oh yeah but you, you come up first is that right um yeah except like i at first with like the google like knowledge panel on the side it was just my stuff but for some reason now it's like a combination of both our stuff saying that we're like the same person so like it says like her website is my website and then that like i also have released her album and like all sorts of stuff so i don't know how to fix that um (laughs) yeah that's where your engineering degree can come in get a job at google (laughs) and then sort that day one exactly yeah (laughs) Um, I asked what lyrics you're proudest of. Is there a recording or song you're you're proudest of? Um, honestly, probably I haven't released it yet, but a song called Sour. Like I'm really happy with the production of it, and I think I like feel like it's like the best one I've done yet. It's so probably that one right now. Yeah. Nice. When can people expect to hear that? Um either late February or early March. Haven't really decided on the release date yet. Is that, is that part of release strategy for you? Do like, cause a lot of new releases, they used to come out on Tuesdays and now Friday seems to be the popular day. Do you pay attention to that kind of thing? Yeah, I've been, I've been doing Fridays now just so like you can get like the whole release radar thing on Spotify. So it like goes on that on Fridays. Um, but yeah, I have been trying to release more on Fridays than just like specific dates. So, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, my last, uh, this wasn't much of a rapid fire, like I thought in my head. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you know I'm a fan. Can we collaborate on something at some point in the future? Yes, I think so. I'm like honestly super, I feel like it's like something you need to work on, but I'm super shitty like when it comes to collaboration because. I'm like, yes, I love that idea. I want to do it. And then I completely forget about it because I'm like working on other projects. So like I, there's like some, uh, another guy that I, his name, his artist name is like Madness. And for about a year, we've been talking about doing collaborations and like, we're finally like, it's like all been my fault, but like, we're finally like meeting up tomorrow to like actually work on a song like over Zoom. But oh, cool. it was, it's just been like the kind of thing where I'm like, oh yes, a hundred percent. Like I'm so down. And then I just erase it from my mind. Like it, it's just gone. So yeah. I don't know why I do that, but I'm going to keep a list now. <laughs> yeah. Are, are there people who've reached out who you're like, oh, I hate your music. I have to find a way to say no nicely. Um, I, yes, there definitely have been some people where they like send me stuff and it's just like, I can't remember the, even the excuses I come up with. Usually, I think now I've just said, like, no, sorry, I'm not interested. Like, I don't even come up with an excuse. And I, yeah. feel, I feel like that just kind of shuts it down so we don't... Because if, if I leave them, like, hoping, like, oh, like, she does want to, just not now, then, like, that's yeah, just If you say, true. oh, I'm so busy, I, I can't, and then they'll follow up, and you're just like, oh, I have to say no again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we might as well just stop it at the beginning. Yeah. Um, have you had any weird... Like, I guess because you've hit Spotify algorithm things like on YouTube or SoundCloud, whatever, uh, have you got any funny negative comments or has everything been pretty positive so far? Um, most things have been pretty positive. Like, I really don't get almost any, like maybe some like anti-Semitic things here and there. No, um, that sucks. But like really not anything too bad. Or like I guess the main thing is people comparing me to different male celebrities. Like one guy was like, You kinda look like Joaquin Phoenix. And I was like, Okay. And someone else said Severus Snape. Um, which I understand Lord Farquaad is no one. Just like a good <laughs> mostly because of the angles I choose to post my photos on the internet, but I think it's pretty funny. Alright, so that's on you. Okay. Yeah, it's on me. <laughs> cool. Uh well let's see what you have for show and tell today. Yeah, so I have my water bottle, but on it specifically this hot dog sticker and also the sticker that you guys sent me. Oh, nice. But, uh, yeah, so the hot dog sticker was like story behind that. It was just, like an on a whim, like I like for some reason ch- chose to put in my bio um, on Instagram. Just like if you listen to my music, I'll send you a Hebrew national hot dog. 
which is like completely an empty promise. Like I never actually had any intention of doing that. But then I was like, what if I actually did? So like without doing any research into how much it would cost or like how it would be, I was like, let me just post TikTok, just be like, or, or like on my Instagram, just like saying like, hey, if you listen to my music, like for the first 100 people who DM me, I'll send you an actual like, Hebrew National hot dog. And I don't know why I chose 100 because like as I look more into it, like it's $7 per hot dog to like mail that. So that's like $700 total to send like hot dogs if I want it to like not go bad in the mail um, right that's yeah so, o- overnight basically <laughs> <laughs> overnighting it like making sure it's like packed correctly like freezing like with the, like the freezing stuff like it was a whole ordeal and i was like i'm not benefiting at all from this like really marketing wise like i would just be spending almost a grand to just like send random people hot dogs so i ended up having my little sister draw like the little stickers and i thought that was a much cuter and cheaper way to do it um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I've got mine here. Uh, you put it on your water bottle. Um, I haven't decided where, where to put mine yet. Are there, yeah. What, what are the approved places to put the Daphna hot dog? Honestly, anywhere. anywhere? Yeah. yeah. Anywhere. I think I honestly would almost never use stickers. And then like, I finally just decided to start putting stickers on my water bottle, but like, I still have a drawer, like, of just stickers I've received that I don't know what to do with. It's yeah. like a lot of them are just like really cute and I don't want to ruin them by ch- choosing the wrong spot. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, cool. Well, it's been so much fun uh, talking to you about your music and everything today. Uh, last word is yours. Uh, if people want to yeah, find your music or get in touch for any reason, uh, where can they go? Um, Just like at Dafna Music on pretty much any social media or Dafna.rock is my website. So. <laughs> and people can also play some i guess some video games you've made on there oh yeah that i am releasing video games february 14th so it sure related that. at all to like separate from music or is it tying into a music thing it's like related to the i love you album i was planning on releasing it much earlier but just found out that it's a lot more complicated to like actually finish a video game during school um so push that to February 14th because then it's like Valentine's Day. It still has to do with love. And yeah, it'll have like eight bit versions of my album playing while you play the game. So. Oh, cool. Oh, that'll be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for talking. All right. Yeah. Later, everyone. Yeah.